Mm -hmm. Hello, and thank you for joining us for Wisconsin Parkinson Association's educational video series. I'm Jeremy Adi, Director of Outreach and Education with Wisconsin Parkinson Association. WPA provides hope, community, support, and resources for people with Parkinson disease and their loved ones. Today, we are talking with Lisa Pritzel, owner and instructor at Empowerment Dance in Green Bay, where she currently offers Parkinson dance classes. Lisa is going to discuss the importance of staying active through dance and movement for people with Parkinson's disease. Welcome, Lisa. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you, Jeremy. I'm really excited to be here today. Well, we're glad to have you. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and your background? Yeah, I'd be glad to. So, um, Green Bay native, and uh, I was born and raised with the idea that once I was put into dance class, that was going to be it pretty much for my life. I was, th I was three years old and my mom and dad put me in dance and uh, I danced for about the first 22 years of my life. Um, was it um, experienced in all kinds of traditional types of dance from tap, jazz, ballet, lyrical, modern. Um, when I was 14, I had the privilege of being one of the founding members of the Wisconsin Ballet Theater. And I had done that for about five years. Um, so that journey carried me to my um, you know, early 20s. And then I got married, we had these beautiful children, and uh, my life just started the next chapter. Um, so the next chapter really just looked like that. I focused on raising my children. Um, I built a career in marketing and advertising. And uh, I can excitedly say now I'm in my third chapter of life, and which is bringing bat dance back into my life and um, bringing the joy and sharing it with other people. Well, we're glad you're on that third chapter and you're back doing dance. Yeah. Um, what brought you to Parkinson dance or PD dance? Well, when I had started the business, this was late 2018, um, I knew that I wanted to take my gift and share it with people who typically don't have the opportunity to have dance in their life, more of a formal dance type of instruction or just being able to move to music and more of a formatted type of program. So um, went online, really just started Googling, all right, people with disabilities and dance, right? And what, what's, what would surface is kind of how um, it stemmed the next um, phase and I was in, um, involved and got acquainted with a program called Dance for PD. And I'll tell you just a little bit about that program. So it's actually been around for almost 20 years. Um, it was formulated in New York um, by a woman. Her name is um, Lottie. Uh, her name slipped my mind, but she was the um, she was the leader for a support group in Brooklyn, New York. And she realized, she said, hey, she goes, I, I know that Parkinson's is a movement disorder and I've seen things happen with um, the, the people in my group when, when music is, is on and there's just this natural flow um, and it, it allows them to move more freely outside of this disease. So she uh, reached out to the Mark Morris Dance Center and said, hey, let's would you be interested in forming a partnership, you know, with our, our support group, your, your dancers, and let's see what happens. Well, um, they embraced the idea. And like I said, it's been around for almost 20 years. It's in 300 um, communities. It's all over the world. Um, and when I had learned about it, I had researched to see if anybody was doing it in the Green Bay area, and nobody was. And I thought, this is it. This is what I am going to do. So I did the research, formed the partnerships, um, did the training, and uh, now we're, we're off and running. Absolutely. And you did the research. I know you, uh, you kind of reached out to WPA at one point. Um, so what training did you receive to become a dance, a PD dance instructor? So they require anybody who goes through the program to receive um, an intensive two-day training followed by an intensive another two days for advanced training. Um, I would say the majority of the individuals who teach the class, um, they'll get a really, really strong foundation from that training. And the training, I did mine in Canada. Um, I went out to Nor uh, New York early this year to just um, continue the educational training. Um, and that should give you the foundation to bring it into your community, find the right partnerships, and then just do the legwork, do the, you know, hit the ground running, trying to find the people, get them into your class. Um, but I decided to really take it to the next level. So I actually applied to, um, to partake in the full certification 
in the Dance for PD program. And it's a pretty extensive program, uh, a process I should say. It's about an eight to 12 month journey. Um, and I'm going through that process right now. I'm about halfway through um, and it really dives into um, a lot of the scientific evidence um, that relates to dance and Parkinson's. Um, it gets into panel interviews and my, a deeper understanding of the disease and how can you really give the best class so that people are getting the most out of that experience. So I'm going through that process right now. So it's pretty exciting. Sounds very immersive. I think that's great for getting the background and then doing the actual classes. Um, can you, I'm going to put you on the spot. You talked about a little bit about the scientific research on Parkinson dance and with people with Parkinson's. Can you touch a little bit to what some of those findings are and how it does benefit people with Parkinson's disease? Well, they know that they've done a lot of trial studies. Um, it's, it's difficult to say exactly what happens in the brain that allows somebody who typically is um, experiencing tremors and um, gait issues and so forth, you put on that music and they literally, and I'll, I'll have some um, videos on my website, so somebody who might be having that tremor gets up and the music comes on and literally they're just dancing, right? It is incredible to watch that happen. Um, so they're working on pinpointing that. There's been a, not a lot of um, peer-reviewed articles that, are, that have been published around it. Um, so they're trying to still gather enough evidence to pinpoint it exactly, but we're certainly seeing the benefits um of dance and how it applies to someone with parkinson's the dancers training um, everything that they learned um, mirrors beautifully with someone who lives with that disorder and i, I can attest I, I remember when i first started with wpa about seven years ago there was a dance class we were doing at a support group in menominee falls and we had a gentleman come in with a very shuffled gait stooped posture and about 40 minutes into the class after doing some of the exercises the movements um, him and his partner were dancing and he was taking these just big fluid steps and looked like a ballroom dancer and his wife's like you have time you haven't moved like this in 15 years and there was no like you said we couldn't explain why it was happening we just saw it and it was just really exciting to see um, now that's not going to happen for everybody but it was really cool to see happen for him so you talked a little bit about the benefits can you talk about maybe some of the benefits you've seen in the people who have uh, started taking your class up in Green Bay yeah, certainly. I would love to share that. So um, I think most of the people who are going to be viewing um, this video afterwards have experienced exercise, right? And I know that you're doing an excellent job of getting that out there. Dance provides a lot of the similar benefits um, that a regular exercise class would because we get to stretch our bodies. We're moving in different ways. Um, we actually, there's a, a point in class where we start moving a little quicker, whether it's your seated or standing, so it gets your heart elevated. Um, but what dance does more um, unique to the experience is it really layers in the creative element, the storytelling element. So um, if any of the viewers have had a chance to watch a dance performance or anybody dance professionally, there's always something that roots that dance, the meaning of dance, right? So when we can layer in music um, and we bring all different kinds of music into our class and you can mirror that up with movement and get them to sync, um, it takes a lot of physical coordination to be able to do that. Um, I also like to throw in a number or two of during class that involves a little bit more um, sequencing. So I'm giving them the movements. All right, here's count one, count two, count three. Let's learn that together. Now I want you to do it for me. Okay, great. Now we're going to build on that. So by the time we're done with a certain part of that, that class, they're having a little dance that they can do. Um, and it really calls for a lot of um, cognition, right? That, that memory um, to be able to, to recall that and do that. And then they can take these little dances, they can put them to any type of music, they can bring them and do them in, the, you know, in their own homes. Um, and then the other piece of class that is uh, really enjoyable is um, I like to do some pieces of class that are, we call co-creation. So it's really giving the participants or the dancers the ability to come up and create their own movements. So what happens in our bodies when we do that is, I always say, all right, anything goes, 
Like anything goes. I want you to be as weird and wild or as fluid and as soft as you want to be. But don't think about it. Like just let your body and the music take over and trust that. And that's when you're going to really feel fulfilled. Um, and it just brings so much joy um, when I'm seeing them move, right? Because I may be something like, okay, we're going to pretend that uh, we're painting, right? That's a kind of a good improv dance, right? So I may give some guided suggestions like pretend you're holding paintbrushes and we're just going to paint a picture. Now let it go. Now you've got the whole canvas, right? What are you going to paint? And if it's a winter scene, we're going to paint a winter scene. We're going to paint Christmas trees. You know, spring is flowers. So we bring a lot of imaginative elements into class that allows for the movement to make sense for how we're moving. So instead of going, okay, we're just going to move our hand back and forth. Now I want you to pretend that your hand is against a window and we're wiping the window. Maybe we're wiping it clean, right? So we bring in a lot of that visual tie into the movement so that it makes sense when they're moving. It's not just, what is she doing with this arm? You know? So that's, uh, that's how we do a lot through class. Well, and I think that's important stuff, Lisa. Is, um, I've always tried to tell people PD dance is a little bit of a misnomer because it's not just dance. There's a lot of movement, a lot of memory. Um, and I think you just kind of hammered that home a little bit that you're not just, you're, you're not doing like dancing with the star. You're doing dance, but there's movement and other things engaged with it. Right, exactly. And I think, um, and maybe this is my misperception, but I have to believe that when, um, when I'm talking to the, the elderly, people with disabilities, people who've never danced before, dance can be a very scary word. Like, whew, I, I've never, I can't do that. I can't dance, right? And I've got a gentleman now who is in his mid 60s in my class and he's like, I never thought I'd be doing ballet and I love it, right? But we break everything down so simply for you. There's a lot of repetition so you feel like you can master the movements. Um, and with that, Anybody can do this stuff. Anybody can can modify it. Um, whether we're we're in our chairs, whether we're standing, you always have that option. And I will give you um, variations. So if we're going really fast, I'll just say slow it down. Take it at your own pace. This is not about perfection. This is about just have fun. That's it. Well, and I think you just touched on another really important part. You can do it seated or standing. So no matter where you are in your Parkinson's journey, you have activities and movements and dances they can do, whether seated or standing. Can you maybe touch on, um, I think you have a little bit, how you maybe start with some of those little more advanced people that you still get them engaged and probably see some changes as they do it more. Correct, you're exactly right. So the first part of class, the first half part of class or so, we always start our class seated. We start with very slow movements just to kind of wake up our bodies, be aware of the space that's around us, get in tune with how our feet are connected to the floor, how our heart is lifted to the sky. So we really just take a nice gentle approach to class. Um, and then as we start feeling good, right, I might crank up the music a little bit, play some of our favorite tunes, and then we're going to be doing things that get our feet moving faster, get our hands moving faster. Um, and then the last part of class, I give everyone the option to, all right, we are going to transition from seated to standing. Stay seated if that's where you're comfortable, that's completely fine. Otherwise, we are going to use the back of our chair as if it was a ballet bar. Right? And that just gives us a lot of good stability. And then we'll do a very nice transitional exercise on our feet, where both our feet are basically going to be staying grounded um, for the entire exercise. And I'll have the opportunity to, to demonstrate that um, towards the end of our conversation today. Um, but everything is designed with everybody's different mobility level, everybody's different um, progression as to where their level is in class. So it's very, very um, adaptable to anybody with living with Parkinson's. It really, truly is. Sounds great. And it sounds like, you know, you really considered all facets of the disease. One of the things I've been a huge proponent for a number of years, and they, they tease me at the office, I use this line all the time, exercise groups, dance groups, groups like yours, they're really support groups who are active. You, ha you have a really good community where everybody's there to support each other. Can you touch on what kind of community you have within those classes and what you see happening beyond just you as the instructor? Right, exactly. Oh my gosh. So that I would think of all the things that um, 
any type of activity anybody's getting involved with, whether it's the regular exercise or dance, or all of these, it is absolutely the community um, of people who come on a weekly basis. I truly call these people friends. I mean, I know when they're vacationing, they're calling me from their vacation homes. They're like, Lisa, how can you keep me dancing when I'm over here? And um, it is, they gather before class and they talk about their week. They just talk about life. They talk about, you know, grandbabies that are being born and all of these wonderful things that are happening in their life. And then after class, they stick around, um, we hang out. There's actually um, another group that I'm involved with that a lot of my dancers also take the Rocksteady boxing class at Western Racket. Once a month, we get together. Um, now we're doing it virtually. We have a social hour. You know, we'll head we'll head to the bar, have some drinks, have some food, whatever. So it truly is this large family, and it is um, that to be able to break someone out of social isolation, social isolation, bring them into this environment where they don't feel like they have to be judged. They don't have to explain why their hand is shaking. They don't have to you know, pretend there's someone that they're not. They are just truly, truly themselves. And we embrace every single person that walks in that door. That's awesome. I, I think the community, um, the support, it, it is great to have other people. Um, I often see it, it's not just the person with Parkinson's that needs the support, but it's the care partner. And you have that nice mutual um, interaction that is just really, really important. Um, you kind of just touched on you know, we are currently, as this is being taped, we are still under the sacred home order. So you can't have the classes in person right now. Um, you said you're doing, you know, virtual social hour. Um, are you doing some of your dances virtually that people can find? And if you are, how would they find them? We are. We are very excited to be holding um, virtual, virtual classes. We're using a program called Zoom. Um, and what I really loved with Zoom is that I'm able to see all the participants um, when they're logged on to class. So it gives us the ability to have those conversations prior to class, after class, have that connection, talk about what's going on. You know, what did you have for breakfast this morning? Can you believe the wind outside? It's blowing my mail about, you know, I mean, it's just the conversations go everywhere. Um, so yes, we have been holding those classes every Tuesday afternoon and that's from 1 30 to 2 30 and that's central standard time and um, i'm very very excited to announce that through the support of the wisconsin parkinson association we can handle and uh, we can host and hold those classes for free for the month of may so you might wonder how do i find out about that right so simply i think if you go out to our website empowermentdance.com uh, there will be a classes tab and under that class tab there will be um, Parkinson's dance and you can go into that and that will give you the link to be able to register for our class. So I am uh, as well hoping to get information out on the WPA um, Facebook pages so I'm really trying to hit a lot of social media as well. Um, but I think the simplest way is, is to go out to our website. Um, I'll even help you guys out. I'll put something right on the homepage, you know, free classes for the month of May. So you don't have to worry about too much navigation when you get out there. Um, and then simply you just click on the link that will take you to a place where all I'm asking for you is your email, um, and the classes that you'd like to attend. And then from there, you'll get a response saying, great, thanks for attending. And then that will give you, um, I will also respond with another email that will talk you through exactly how to set up Zoom if you haven't used it before. Um, some very basic videos that will talk you through that, how to, to get involved. Um, so it should be a pretty simple experience if you haven't been um, acquainted yet with that platform. But um, I'm kind of a technology geek, so I love to help people out. So if somebody gets stuck, Call me up, I'd love to help. So I would love to see us max it out and get almost 100 people out there. So that's my goal. So it's just fun. I think it's a great goal. And what we will do, Lisa, when we post this video, um, for those watching it, you should be able to refer back to the narrative or the description of the video. And we will have that link there as well. Um, so you can go right to Lisa's website, sign up for the classes. Um, I, I think it's great. You and I were talking before we started the video, how we're all just wearing different hats right now, whether it's offering a virtual dance class, um, offering virtual other opportunities, the more we can do to keep people active is great. And I'm sure you'll get a great response. I think it's a wonderful opportunity for a lot of people to do. Um, once Safer at Home is done, 
and I want to come to your class in Green Bay and I want to go to Empowerment Dance. Um, how do I find out about the class? How do, how do I find out about the, uh, the fee structure, all that stuff? Um, can you kind of give us some information on how to find uh, your website and uh, your class and things like that? Right. So um, same location that you would find the information to access our free classes for the month of May. On that same page, there will be information on the classes that we're holding um, at Western Racket. So I have a partnership with them. We have a beautiful space that, that we can facilitate the classes. They're still going to be held at the same day and time, so we haven't changed any of the scheduling. It's still going to be every Tuesday afternoon, um, 1.30 to 2.45, though. So it's an hour and 15-minute class when we, uh, when we are in person. Um, it just allows us for it to do a little bit more interaction with one another that we don't have to do, you know, we don't have the opportunity when we're doing it virtually. Um, so all that information I was out on our website. Um, I would be the main contact. My email is out there, phone number, all of that um, to, to connect if you have any questions. If I want to just come and observe, I'm not sure if it's right for me. I want to come and observe. Um, do you allow, do you have special times where we do that? Or can I just contact you at a time and say, I'd love to come and just see what it's like before I make a decision. Yes, I'm glad you brought that up. So the first class is always free, right? I want you to come and I want you to experience it. Um, because I'm smart enough to know that as, as much as I love to think everybody's going to love the class, it's not for everyone. And I get that and that's okay. Right? So I really want you to make, I want to make sure that you're comfortable in the space. I want you to make sure you're comfortable with me. I want you to feel like you can trust me. Right? Cause I take that responsibility very seriously. Um, and after that, um, we have a conversation. Right? Did you like it? Did you get anything out of class today? And then I'll just walk you through what those next steps would be if you'd like to join us um, indefinitely. And how I hold my classes is um, people purchase a pack of 10 classes, right? And most of them will come every, every week, right? And when that 10 pack is up, I just, you know, send them an email. Would you like to renew for another 10? Now you don't have to use all 10 in a row, right? So I might use this one, this one, but oh, I've got something, I've got an appointment that time. I can't make that, is that okay? Of course, right? I'm not gonna dock you. So, um, and the other thing I wanna mention to you is that it's free for caregivers all the time, right? So I highly encourage a caregiver to attend um, and dance with us, right? You get to be as actively involved in the class as everyone else. So that could be your spouse, significant other, caregiver, whomever, um, the more we can get into that class to build that sense of community is really important. Excellent. I appreciate I, mean, I think it's a great layout. I think it's great for caregivers to be part of it. I think uh, it gives them an outlet just to be active, as you said, and also connect with other caregivers. Um, I want to go back. We, we've talked about a lot of different parts of the class. I think one of the things you mentioned that I wanted to talk about and I completely forgot, so I'm going back to, um, you talked about that we try to engage the cognitive aspect of Parkinson's. We try to make sure people are thinking. And you talked a little bit about some of the exercises we do. Um, can you talk a little bit about maybe some of the other cognitive things you're doing that maybe people don't realize, but you're really just trying to incorporate everything, the mind, the body, everything in the dance class? Right. And I think you summed it up beautifully at the end there. What you said is it's a, it's a connection between mind and body. Right. So when we're dancing, what we're doing is we're opening up those neural pathways in our brain. And I like to use the example of, all right, so you've got a shed in the back part of your yard and you may walk in the grass to get a tool out of your shed and you have to walk back into your house. Now, the more times you walk back and forth to that shed, the more you're going to pat down that grass and it's going to be easier for you to get there back and forth. So that is really what's happening when we dance on a regular basis. It really helps to clear our mind. It, it connects all those little synapses in our, in our brain that help us to um, function differently, think differently, think a little bit, a little bit more clearly. Um, so when I'm giving you a sequence and I'm asking you to recall it and remember it, you're asking your brain to do some work. And you're asking your body and your brain to work together. And I think that's where the magic happens is because there's even sometimes where we'll repeat a certain dance or a certain segment of class two or three weeks in a row. And what I see happen is the first week is uh, you get this kind of look of what did she just, what did, can you do that again? Because I'm not sure that I got it, right? And it's, it's learning and it's, it's processing. 
The second week we do that, they we have to do a little bit of review. Okay, get it back in my brain. Good, let it work with the music. I got it. Okay, feeling a little bit more comfortable in that second week. Third week, I can be like, all right, guys, I'm going to put the music on, go, right? And now they can take it and they can express it, which is that really third layer of learning when it comes to dance is now I can express it and I can feel it. I can feel the joy. I can feel the happiness. Um, and I think what my students tell me after taking my class is that it's very calming. It's it's good. It's it's good to just really just kind of let go. Um, it's good for my mental health. Um, it's very therapeutic. I'm not a therapist, but it has very therapeutic qualities from that respect. Because um, people can just now, you know, all right, we're doing this. Now I'm going to get my shoulders involved. Now I'm feeling it because I don't have to think about the move and I can just start to jam, right? So um, that's, that's really where the brain uh, plays a big function in the dance class. That's great. I, I appreciate you kind of explaining that a little more, and I think it makes a lot of sense. Um, we are going to have you demonstrate a few dances in a minute, um, but before we get to that point, I just want to ask you anything we haven't touched on that you're like, gee, we really forgot this, Jeremy, and it's an important point that I want to make sure people know. Yeah, I think I just want to stress home, try it. Just try something new. I don't, you, I don't want to have any fear. Um, for you or any reservation when trying something new. Um, but when you try something new, sometimes some really wonderful and magical things start to happen. Um, so um, you come once and you try it and I think you're gonna be hooked. I think just it's just stepping outside of your comfort zone perhaps a little bit. Um, you know, especially stepping out the door and now I'm back into the open again. I've got to see people. So um, I think it, it truly would bring a ton of joy into your life. Well, and don't they say, kind of going back to the cognitive, every time you do something new, you develop new pathways. And every time you try something different, you know, and like you said, it may be, I think some people I've talked to, they're hesitant to do dance because they picture, I'm not going to do the cha-cha or the, you know, but that's not what you're doing. You're doing a lot of different things. And I think you're right. Once you try it, you're going to really find it's not what you expected in a good way. Right, exactly. And I think I also want to say this too, Jeremy, I think it's really important for someone who might be hesitant in joining our class. I'll be honest to say that um, individuals, when they come and try the class the first time, they might feel a little overwhelmed. And I'm just going to be completely honest with you because it is all the things we just discussed. It is new. It's a new way of moving my body. I would stress to you to push through that first couple of weeks. And it's going to become, it's going to be like this little bit of a hill, like, oh, this is going to be a little bit new and difficult. But once you're there, it's only a couple of weeks and then it's like smooth sailing. It's just a different way for your body to adjust. So I'd say, don't be hesitant of, about that. Everybody has been in that spot when they've tried this class. So just push through that um, and uh, you'll be happy you did. Well, Lisa, thank you so much for your time today and providing information and resources on a way to remain active through PD dance during the current safer at home order. While Lisa gets set up to lead us in a couple of dances to close today's video, um, I'm going to wrap up today's call. So while Lisa gets set, remember, we are all practicing social distancing. Please check in frequently with Wisconsin Parkinson Association. We are regularly updating our website and Facebook page with exercise classes, educational videos such as this, and a number of other resources for you to stay safer at home. You can also email us at mail at wiparkinson.org with future topics you'd like to see covered by our local experts. Again, I'd like to thank Lisa for being our guest and thanks you for joining us. Now take care and let's get moving with Lisa. Um, you're on mute, Lisa. There we go. All right, super. All right, so here we go. So before we get started, there's only one thing I wanna ask of you is to make sure that you've got a, a stable chair underneath you, preferably something that doesn't have arms. If you have arms, that's okay. Don't worry about it if you got arms on your chair um, because we to, tend to move a little bit side to side and it just gives us a little bit more freedom. Also make sure, do a wingspan test to make sure you have enough room all around you, front to back, 
And then do the same thing with your feet. Make sure you've got some clearance on the floor. Maybe you've got pets, carpets, things in the way. Just make sure you take a few moments to adjust your surroundings before we get started, okay? So we're gonna do two different numbers today. The first is a little bit of a warm-up exercise. Upper body to just kind of stretch us out a little bit. What I like to do for the majority of my dances is give you a little bit of instruction of what's gonna happen before we put on the music. So, sitting up nice and tall, get those feet directly underneath your knees and feel those feet grounded into the floor. We're gonna start by reaching one hand down to the ground and it's gonna reach up overhead. Now, I call this the needle dance because we're gonna take our hand, thread it through this little hole, this little needle that we've created, right? So you've got one hand sitting on your knee and you're gonna thread that hand right through that needle, the eye of the needle, okay? So the next part, you're gonna initiate the movement from your elbow. So we're gonna draw our elbow up, keep your hand bent, so your fingers are pointed down to the ground. Take your fingers and I want you to reach down towards your opposite toe. Good, now we're gonna sit up nice and tall and I want you to give me three big waves in the air. One, two, three, and bring your hand down. Okay, so that's the combination. Let's review it together one more time. So we're gonna start with that hand to the side, reach it up, two, three, four, thread your needle, two, three, four. Now bring that elbow up, one, two, bring it down to your toe, three, four, and give me three big waves in the air, five, six, seven, and eight. Okay, that's it. So now we get to put it with music. So again, make sure you're comfortable. Those feet are directly underneath your knees. All right, here we go. Don't worry, be happy, right? That's all we can do right now is be happy. You have no other time right now than just to be happy. Here we go. Start. We have well, one, two, three, song I wrote. four. Bring it My through that hole. Slide that needle all the way through. Don't bring don't bring your elbow down to your toe. Me wave me. in the air. Other side. Now we have to reverse this whole thing. Bring it down right in between. Make it ah, that's don't it. Worry. Elbow. Reach three waves. We're gonna try that again on the first hand. One, two, three, four. Maybe you can reach a little further. Drop that shoulder, elbow up, reaching down. Three waves. One, two, three, other side. One, two, three, four. Bring it through. Now bring that elbow up, bring it down. Up, two, now watch this. We're gonna take a diagonal line. I want you to reach from one side to the other. Now you can make that line go wherever you want. One side to the other, snap. One, two, three, four. Try the other hand. So we're drawing lines from side to side. You don't have to follow me. You just take your lines wherever you wanna go. Here's our snap. One, two, Look at three, I'm happy. four. Try it again. Find that line and down. So remember, you've got this space all around you, right? So find it. Find the ceiling. Find the floor. Snap, snap, snap. Other side. Reach. Find that diagonal. Ah, make sure you're taking a nice deep breath here. Ah. Good. Three snaps. One, two. Now we get to say hello to each other. Hey. Reach out to the people in cyberspace. How you guys doing? Right? If you see somebody you know, call out. Hey, mom. What's going on? Maybe you got somebody in the room. Yeah, using some voice activation. We get that in class too, right? All right. One more time. Give me some waves. Reach those hands wide. Good. Bring your hands up. Shake them down. All right, we're taking this whole thing from the top. Ready? Here we go. One, two, three. Bring it through and thread your needle. Drop your shoulder. Feel a good stretch. Elbow up and down to your toe. Three waves. One, two, three. Other side. One. All right, thread it through. Good. Feel those feet firm into the floor. Reach it across and up. 
I you. You to now just give me some snaps. You listen to what I say. Your life is better. Side to side. But when you worry, you make it lovely. You got it. Excellent. That's it. Excellent. Very good. See? It is really, really quite simple. So I like to do one more with you. So again, I'm going to give you some options. You can stand behind your chair or you can stay seated. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a ballet move and it's called a fondue. So if you've been out to a restaurant before and you've experienced eating fondue, right? You've got a stick and you've got some like yummy cheese or bread, something on the end of that stick and you dip that stick with your little yummies into chocolate and cheese and whatever things, right? And you drip and you pull it out. So a fondue and ballet really is very similar type of movement. So what I'm going to do is transition to the back of my chair and I want to show you how this works. I'm going to make a small adjustment here so you can see my whole body. All right. So, well, first, before we get moving underneath in our feet, what we're going to do is we're going to stand in what's called first position. And what I'm going to do so you guys can see what's going on with my lower body is I'm just going to move my chair aside, but I'm going to pretend that I'm holding on to it so you can see what's happening with my feet. So you're going to start with your feet together, your heels together, and your toes turned out wide. This is called your first position. Okay, so what we're going to do is holding on to our chair, I want you to ground your feet into the floor with your heels together, and I want you to lift up through your waist, lower your shoulders, and then lift through the crown of your head all the way up to the ceiling so you feel really nice and tall. Okay, so this is going to take a little coordination and balance work. So our fondue, let me show you first what it looks like, and then I'm going to break it down. So a fondue is going to be bending both legs straightening both legs, right? So imagine you've got that little piece of bread or that yummy little niblet on the end of your toe and we're dipping it into cheese or chocolate, whatever your preference is here, all right? So that is the fondue. So let me break it down for you. So again, we've got our posture. We're standing up nice and tall. You're going to take one foot and I want you to just touch your ankle with that foot, okay? Now, when we start, we're going to bend our supporting leg. That's called a plie. Now, it's important that your knee is directly aligned over your toe. We're going to stretch out both legs together. Reach and in and reach. So that's our fondue. So we're melting in and stringing it out, right? And melting in and stringing it out, okay? So that is the basic of the fondue. So you're just going to follow along with me. We're going to be able to do this on both sides because we want to work both sides equally, get the benefit on both, both, right? And left. All right, here we go. All right, so holding our hands, we get our chair for support. Here we go, bend for two. Now reach and lengthen that leg out to the side. Good, and in for two, and out. Nice and slow and controlled. Keep that movement nice and fluid. Now watch this, you're gonna take your leg, carry it to the back. Seven and eight. All right, now we're gonna take this little bend and we're gonna reach our leg to the back. Good, stay nice and tall over that supporting leg. And back. Good, one more. In for two and out. Grow tall, lift that chest. Bring that leg to the side. Six, seven. Now we're gonna do that whole thing with the other leg. And bend for two. Reach it, side. Good, nice and slow. Flat into the floor. 
think Jeremy, oops, what we see during um, our exercises, we work a lot on a balance, um, coordination, right and left. So we really hit all of those um, important elements um, that correspond directly to someone living with Parkinson's. So that's just a little teaser. It, it was great, Lisa. I, I really appreciate you showing this. I hope people get a good flavor for what PD Dance is and uh, hopefully reach out to you or go to our website and find PD Dance classes in their area. So thank you so much. Um, and we will wrap today and uh, hopefully they can join your class online in the very near future. Thank you so much. It was great to talk to with you today. Thank you. Not a problem. Have a good day. Bye.